Welcome everyone to a soul-filled episode of the Fake Nerd Podcast Review Special Series, where we're talking about soul. I got soul. The I'm new Pixar sure. movie. The new Pixar movie, uh, Soul. Full spoilers ahead. Uh, I'm Brandon C. McClure. With me, as always, is Ben Magnet. I'm a soul man. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> I'm gonna stop right there because I don't want to get copyright written. Ryan. My name's Ryan Leopolis, and Ben, if you think you're so good, you would get copyrighted. That is beautiful, baby. <laughs> beautiful. Ouch. Marks. I'm Marks. just kidding. No, you're not. <laughs> Stop it. Sparks. Uh, yeah, hi. I, uh, I'm i very pleased. Okay. Oh, we right well, into the review. Look at that. Let's go right into it. Uh, let's give us so, some initial thoughts. We're going to go right into it. Um, for those of you who've probably listened to our Wonder Woman review special at this point, that is up now. Uh, if you haven't, uh, but if you have, then you'll know why we're jumping right into it because we spent most of that beginning episode talking about my hair. So, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so let's go into it. Uh, I'll start. This was fine. Ben, this this was great. I had a really good time with it. Uh, Ryan. It was so good. I fell asleep, and I had to finish watching it today. <laughs> no, yeah, I, it's really good. It's 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 it, it's pro- it's probably like the deepest, craziest. Like I can't believe Pixar made this movie of their movies. Uh, I, it's really good. I don't know if it's like their best one or anything. And Sparks. Uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I don't know. I I think that there is like. There's, it feels like there's some extra step I wanted them to to take with it, but I couldn't tell you what it is. And overall, I'm very happy with yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brandon, you said fine or fun? I, fine. I said fine. F I N E. I'm sorry. Mm. No, no, no. Tell, me just, tell me, Sparks, how should I feel about this movie? No, I'm just <laughs> intrigued because I don't, I don't. Listen, this, this movie just not the reaction that didn't I had, give him the okay. spark. I know we're gonna do it. I just want to know why. Uh, okay, so let's just dive into it. Uh, this is this is Pixar's movie about uh, the afterlife, what happens to you before and after you're gone. Um, and uh, uh, just I will start with a with what something I really enjoyed was I really liked how the world beyond uh, was uh, uh, visualized, and I really mm-hmm. liked. I really like the 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 ethereal beings, the Jerry's and the Terry's. Mm-hmm. I thought yeah. all that design was awesome. I think this movie is gorgeous. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, uh, just I, looking back at like people models from like Toy Story oof. to people models in this movie, it's like good lord, Pixar has come so far. Oh, and, like, god. The- oh god, I oh, I saw a clip on Twitter from the first Toy Story film where all the kids, it's a very it brief Andy's. shot of all the kids in uh, for Andy's party. They're all just copies of Andy in different <laughs> shirts. Yeah. Cause they could not make those models. But yeah, how far mm-hmm. Pixar has come. Good Lord. The, the animation is just so, is just so spectacular to me. The textures and the real world are, 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 are mind blowing a lot of the mm-hmm. time. Um, but I just found the the designs for the Jerry's to be very inventive and a cool way to visualize that concept. I agree. I thought was, I thought was funny. Like just his, his design, how he's always counting and all. Yeah. All the other Jerry's I thought were really good. <laughs> the best joke in the movie for me. <clears throat> sorry. The best joke in the movie for me was when they're like, well, what about the count? Oh, we'll take care of that. I just okay, okay. Terry, look over there. What's going on? <laughs> hey, it's the little- <laughs> over there. What? And then yeah, all, all the mentors, like, all the mentors are like abstract art. Um, and there's there's even a, a scene where like one of the Jerry's explains what this is, or it's twenty two who explains it. They're like, this is all abstract bullshit. Like none of this is really real. This, this is all is just, just how your brain this is how you, process it. So yeah. it's like everybody can be, perceive us differently. This is just for Joe what he's experiencing. Right. So that uh, that works a lot for me. That sets the rules. So like, oh, this is all. Uh, baloney nonsense. It, it all cool. is just what it is. Yeah, it all um, makes sense because it, it makes sense. Yeah. Yes, I um, agree. Um, I I really like, on that note, I really like this film's use of cutaway humor. It uses it a lot, but I think it uses it well. Mm-hmm. And the other thing I was going to say when we were talking about Terry's design is when Terry goes to the real world and he's moving around objects, I, he feels like something escaped from a Pixar short. It's yeah. just a plot mm-hmm. point of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not all short of that. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, that was that's actually a really good uh, analogy. And also, one of the things I want to say is uh, one of the things I absolutely adore about this movie is that this is one of the funniest Pixar films I've seen in a very, very long time. Not to say that Pixar films aren't funny. I love Onward. A uh, good dinosaur had had really good jokes, but for some reason, the jokes here in Seoul just landed. Like one of my favorite jokes that I was laughing so hard at was the New York Knicks joke. Oh, that was me too. I was so brutal. I, I mess with this team all the time. I've been messing with this team for decades. Toss, and then it's like the the, the player misses the dug. It's like, and the announcer's like, and the Knicks lose another one. It's like, that was, oh shit. That was. Look, not even as a sports fan, I was like, "That's pretty good." <laughs> that was great. And even another joke when they meet uh, uh, Moonwind, and he's like, "I used to be a lost soul." Yeah, why? Tetris. I'm like, okay, I'm personally attacked. <laughs> great Man, joke. That... Like, I have. Uh, uh, I think you're right. I think you're right, but there's there was a lot more more points in this film that I remember that I'm that I'm cackling of laughter and and not just like uh, laughing or yeah. I think I might agree with this. Well, you know, I'll say it's one of the funniest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Certainly, they're funniest in in recent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the like getting in the zone. Like this this was a very much a me movie um, where it's you know dealing with the afterlife and like getting into the zone and like being transferred to a spiritual dimension. Just that that whole crew of like those spirit warriors like on their on their silly ship was just so fun and like them tra- traversing like the people who are like stuck like uh, it's like what is like the, the anti-zone like they're stuck in like a rut and they're like yeah, yeah. they look like golems i'm like this is so imaginative and exactly how i would do something like like a pixar afterlife like uh i found it just wickedly imaginative uh, like going on those 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 the soul the like the dream chase or I, I call them dream chasers but they're not but find the lost soul and you see that guy who's like make a trade make a trade now, when I was watching this movie, I watched it with subtitles because when because when you listen to it, it's <laughs> like some garbage. But then you, he's sitting, he's come repeating, make a trade, make a trade because he's a stockbroker. And then he's like, yeah. "What am I?" Do-? Then he his soul gets saved. I love this. Just the what am I doing here? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, life rut and I, like what that does to your soul. Actually, it, it, it's something on a spiritual level. I love when yeah. the guy comes out. He's like, oh, "It's another hedge fund manager." We have <laughs> these guys a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it's just. Everything oh, there's when this this movie has such incredible peaks and even the emotional bits. I know I'm, I'm we're jumping around. We're still top. We're in the dead middle. Uh, uh, you know I'll I'll say that right for later because I no, want to no, jump around. The, go for it. Go do uh, it. Do one it. One of the bits that really hit. Do me it, swimming. baby. All right, fine. I'm doing it. One of the bits that really hit hard for this movie was near the. It's I want to say at the end of the second act or the beginning of the third act when um when uh, Joe was talking to his mom about him pursuing his music and his passion because um, yeah. i felt a lot of that should have been like huh i feel like this is a conversation i should have had about my passions with one of my own parents who will remain nameless mm-hmm. and it's like yikes i should have i mean because he's standing because joe's standing his ground he's like he this is what he wants to do and it may not be the best thing but this is what he loves this is definitely a movie about mm-hmm. artists you know, yeah, artist it, passion it was, and yeah. following your 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 passion and, and mm-hmm. making sure that's something that's you want to do. About, yeah, like like it, it focuses on art artistry, but I think it's just yeah. about having passion for something. Yeah, I think yeah. it's and, I mean, like because it's through the perspective of an artist that that's more heavily featured, but it's definitely like at its core touching on living your life in a way that you feel fulfilled mm-hmm. that you feel uh is is gratifying and not allow like chasing mm-hmm. that thing yeah. and uh getting other people in your world to respect that you're chasing that yeah. i think my oh no you know, i've never seen that that <laughs> that hit hard but also hit in a different note was when he was talking to the, his barber and how his That's barber said like oh yeah. i want to be a veterinarian but barber school is cheaper but i still absolutely love doing what i do it's like wow that because one of the things I learned, unfortunately, a little later in my life that I probably should have learned sooner was you may have this dream, but your dreams do change. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Like the barber, he wanted to be a vet when he got out of the Navy, but he instead became a barber and said, hey, this is actually really fun. I love doing this. I love talking to people. I could do this every day. That's that such a strong message for kids, too. I think like oh, for, yeah. for a kid movie, like the message of this movie being like, <laughs> hey, like you don't have to be a doctor if you don't want to be a doctor. Like if, you, if your dream, if your dreams change, be happy with what you turn into. Don't expect to be something. Which is, and I think that's so beautiful. It's, oh, it's yeah. kind of in 
line is what like what Monsters University did so well, which is like you can fail at the thing you want to have the most, but you can still find something you love to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 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 even better than that because for me, what works so well about Soul is its its brilliance is in its simplicity, mm-hmm. which is that Joe perceives that what is missing is the purpose that that each person is defined their purpose before they go, and that got so rooted through Joe's perspective. I forgot that nobody ever said to Joe that that's what it was. So when Joe later is told by Terry, who who gave you that idea? Like, that's not what the thing is. Like, it's not that. It's, just, it's a spark. It's not a purpose. And then I went, oh, my God, I forgot that nobody told Joe that. <laughs> I went on that same trip where I'm like, no, it's, they're looking for the purpose. And then you kind of uncover as it's happening to uh, 22 that it's not a purpose. It's, it's something more... Um, but I, I thought that was really clever how the film just simply tricks you in yeah. going along with that idea. And that's why Joe's like rattling with it. Cause that's the, the what the barbershop scene challenges so well is the idea of like, Oh, so being a barber was your purpose. He's like, what? No, <laughs> like, but, but you love it. Like that's the thing. And he can't rationalize those ideas because he feels like everything should be one, on one track, which is why I love that the ending for Joe of the film is about him recognizing like when he's playing to get back into the zone to get to 22, he's not just remembering music. He's remembering the things that he loves about being alive that mm-hmm. he loves in his life. And that those things are what's important, not necessarily the the one thing that you strive to do. It's not the career choice that is important. Uh, you guys are generally pre- pretty well plugged into controversy. I've been seeing that there's some controversy with soul, particularly in the barbershop scene. Do you know anything about that? Or, and or do, would you like to talk about it? I... I... I, I, I'm not black. I can't. I can't speak to the black experience. I, yeah. I, people saying that this is a stereotypical representation because in a movie about black people, he's into jazz and they're into barber shops. And I'm like, I, I can't. I can't speak to that. You know, like it, it, it's. I. It, they're not. They're. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. And it is yeah. something that like. And I actually literally just watched a video before we did this, like before we reviewed about this. Like it was. It was a black man talking about this. He's like, listen. Like it, we have to fight. We have to fight for you know for to be in movies and stuff like this. But at the same time, we can't fight every single time a black person's in a movie if something's not done right, or if like this movie, it's it, they're doing it with the best of intention intentions. Also, it's a black creative team who made the movie, so it's like it's and and that that my my other thing about it would be I'm like. I understand that that those are like stereotyped things, but it's also those are high black culture yeah touchstones like black barbershops are a cultural touchstone in new york and other places but new york specifically which is where they are and uh and in uh and jazz that is that is very black culture like yeah. it's an aspect of black culture it might not speak to all black people i can i can totally understand i'm also not black <laughs> obviously so i can't say a ton about it but like i i do think that like it is it is doing more to be like representative and embracing than it is to stereotype in my opinion yes may i just real quickly uh read out um i I have no horse in this race so i want to be clear um but what i was talking about specifically wasn't necessarily that um i saw something i saw something that jen posted you know our friend jen uh, the key thief she posted on uh letterbox a review um that said if, if you don't mind i'd like to read it it's short um, Pixar made a movie that commodified black culture, spat in the face of addicts and those suffering through mental illness. Had Tina Fey explain how black people are unfulfilled and ultimately taught the audience nothing. Uh, do you understand that? Is there anything there that we want to touch on? It's a lot. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, let's say the last part again. Uh, black people as unfulfilled and... Uh, okay, black people as unfulfilled and ultimately taught the audience nothing. I don't know if I... I don't agree with that. I don't agree. No. Um, trying to think about the the addict and and uh, uh, I, I want to be clear. Like, if you feel this way, I, I think absolutely you're allowed to feel any way you want about it, any way that you feel about a movie. It's totally uh, it's your perspective. Everyone has different perspectives. So this is how you feel. Totally, uh, I personally just don't understand it. Yeah, you know, I don't understand. I don't understand um, that, which is why I go to these things to learn. I guess like the mental illness part would be in reference to like Pete, the way people would perceive Joe when it's 22 talking through him. I can't think of what else it would be. 
I would need to read that review and do some in looking into myself instead of being put kind of on the spot right now. Anyway, well, I don't want to, I don't want to spend no, too much time on it. If there's nothing. I would actually like look into it instead of just trying to think of it immediately. Yeah. Uh, but, but uh, I definitely wouldn't agree with the commodifying black culture. Um, it's featuring black culture. I wouldn't say it's commodifying it. Um, I think that's, Cynic, uh, cynic, cynicism for yeah. cynicism's sake uh and it's like again like it, it's it's it was co-directed by pete doctor but it was also co-directed by by uh i think ken powers was the name and like they wrote and directed it as well so yeah. it's like it it's not just it's not just a bunch of white people and if it was just a bunch of white people i'd be i'd feel differently but like i i i, I don't i don't have enough information as a white dude to help in, in this i don't know i'm sorry i also don't agree that like it says that black people are unfulfilled it's just that black people are the characters that we're seeing so like that's not it's it can mean that anybody is is unfulfilled it's just that we are I following will, the I, I, okay you know what i will say something i do think that it sucks that it, it is a white woman delivering those lines like i think that's that's a little tone deaf personally delivering which lines the lines about how the the going back to what they were they're, they're talking about like Tina Fey is in the chair she's the one delivering these lines talking about how how unfulfilled the unfulfillment uh, in people's lives and like I think that's a little toned up that it is Tina Fey doing it not necessarily I, like this is gonna sound oh god like I I this is not me being the the white defender I swear but like it's 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 a soul it's not like in the movie it's not a white person being a black person it's someone who hasn't been born yet that's not even a figment of a, a reality. Sure, but it's, but well, it's also well, Tina Fey, but it's also Tina Fey who, who already has gotten in trouble for being racist recently. I, I, I don't uh, know anything. I, I don't know if this is a good, I don't, uh, it took us down a bad path. The, I'm so sorry. No, because one of the things in the movie is like in the very beginning of soul, when, when Joe meets 22, he even asks why you sound like a middle-aged white lady. And she's like, Oh, this is, I just choose to sound like this. Cause they're, she's a pre-born soul she doesn't have like a set race gender or whatever and then she goes and 22 goes through all the different voices so yeah i, I mean I, that could be a bad defense because i'm not trying to defend i kind of see what you're going at but at the same time ugh, I, I don't know I think, oh. here's, here, wait um so i think that the problem is uh, for me that like it, we can't we just talked about Wonder Woman 84. And my problem with Wonder Woman 84 is it's not even willing to have a conversation about marginalization and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's not even a allowing other, other perspectives to be brought in. It is a very like pro-American, very white elitist driven narrative. Uh, Soul is welcoming in and having a conversation based around a much more inclusive idea. And regardless of the voices that are doing it, at least they are having those conversations and presenting those, those talking points and giving representation. Uh, the opportunity to be there, whether or not you feel like it's distilled or or uh, um, stereotyped, uh, it's still like you know allowing these uh, black voices to speak in this space to have these character representations. And I don't think that having Tina Fey's voice involved in that, in the concept of the narrative that it's presenting this talking point through this lesson, this this opening idea of how do you know when you've done something that you're happy with uh, matters into the context of, I need to bring in my problem with this being a white voice actress voicing this soul. I don't think that those things correlate. I don't think it works. And I think we are like entering a territory with that where we're beating something up for trying to, yeah, to educate and be yeah. inclusive when we should be beating up what, things like Wonder Woman 84 that aren't even attempting that kind of conversation. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I kind of go like, it, if the lesson is strong, what's the problem? Um, but again, like I'm a white guy, so whatever. Saul's pretty good, I think. I think we <laughs> lost Brandon. <laughs> All right, we lost Brandon. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, I really enjoy uh all the cutaways to the previous mentors 22 has had yeah oh, he's like well, they're the very funny stuff, yeah. they're really funny they're good cutaways but what i like the most about it is that at the end 
they come, they all are, they come together and they're the representations of her negative voices because of all the, mm-hmm. you know, it's been years of people saying you're worthless, you're nothing, you're blah, blah, blah. And the yeah. fact that they're the things that she's seeing in there. And then Joe becomes the final absolute representation of that. Yeah. Cause the, uh, way, I, yeah, cause the way I see it, cause they call, they call her 22 and the soul that they bring out before is total like X billion, blah, 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 blah. Like this in, <laughs> This obscurely long number, and then there's like, and then there's 22. She's like the problem child of yeah, the, the year. Well, yeah. which I thought was funny. It's like, wow, the 22nd soul to ever be created essentially is like, nah. yeah, it's like, it's, I think it's a good message for, for, for kids and even just people. Like, they're so afraid of living because, like, what if they're not good at anything? Like that yeah. is so relatable and so sad. And like, listen, man, you're not, you don't, you might not realize what you're good at, or it might come later. Like the spark, you never know what it's going to be. You just got to like, but yeah. you can't, you can't not live life being afraid of, of, because you're not, you're not, uh, you're not sure of, of what the future is. Yeah. Like I think that's but, just a good message for a movie. Or even like when they go through the hall of everything and they're like, hey, here's like a rocket ship, meh. Like every single time, twenty two just goes, meh. Are all these like, awesome things, especially how crazy the things go, like. Oh, here's um, here's pizza. Meh. Here's chemistry. How cool is chemistry? Meh. Okay, f it. Let's put you in a rocket and go into space. Meh. I, 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 yeah. Go, uh, go ahead. No, I just thought it was funny how everything that Joe tries to do to get twenty two for the spark, so he can take the Earth pass and get back home, is just. I just love how every time something's like. Because if I was in like if you put me in the middle of a of a ship and say hey we're launching into space I'm like hell yeah and the, it's like just the reaction to just the just the stone cold meh I don't know I just thought it was freaking hilarious did we know it was like a body swap movie no they hid that yeah like I didn't know what the movie was and then they wake up and he's a cat I, like, I will be honest oh. I will be honest I suspected I didn't suspect a body swap but I suspected there was going to be some antics of 22 and him falling back to earth yeah because we saw too much like as the trailers were coming out we saw a little bit more footage that made me go like that they must go back to earth at some point point. I, like I wouldn't cat, be surprised if it's yeah. 22 but I assume 22 was going to be the cat yeah because I started seeing the cat in some of the marketing and stuff. Oh, yeah. I didn't even So know. I assumed 22 was going to be the cat. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of liked the way that it worked out. I no, I did too. I like, thought I... that, that humor worked really well, especially um, I think one of the, another one of my favorite moments is 22 getting on board with the student who wants to quit. Oh, and then, like, yeah. mind if he watches her love love playing it. I, oh, I, with, yeah, the, with, the, with the horn. Like, wait, you wanted to quit, but now you love it? Like, this is so confusing to me. Like, right, and trying to, to process that. And I think they I do a really it. good job of showing, illustrating, like, you can go through the hall of everything and you can think that you're going to find something, but sometimes you just, there is no uh, replacement for experience. Yeah. For the actual for experience, for yes. the experience of living something. Absolutely. Yeah. If I had one critique with soul, it'd be the scene where Connie doesn't, the, the, the trombone player who comes to visit him after, just after the body swap is where she doesn't really question Joe's sudden turn about how, how's like, yeah, sure. Quit music. Because in what I got in the classroom, well, like when Connie loses herself in the classroom and all the kids start sneaking in, he's like, no, and he comes to her defense. Like when she comes to his to his apartment and is like, hey, I want to quit, I would have been like, hold up, you're like the biggest music nerd I know, and now you're telling me to quit? I felt like that could there like I get that she's a 12 year girl and she's in a bit of a tunnel vision. It's like it's like even if someone's like, Yeah, sure, go for it, even if it's the one mentor who you would think, no, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Or yell no, don't do it. But at the end of the day, we're toward 22 is like, oh wow, you're really good. You sure you want to quit? And then Connie's like, oh no. If there was one critique, I was like, maybe that could have done a little bit. It's like, hey, maybe something isn't completely right with Joe. But as the movie goes on, I completely forgot it. I, I didn't forget about that scene, but it bothered me less. I don't I don't even think that's necessary because my read on it was that this is a girl who's kind of like had an attitude about it for a while. Because we got that in the establishing scene at the beginning of the film. Mm-hmm. And so you can easily translate that to Joe using, like, Joe. But if it was Joe, you could even easily interpret that as him using reverse psychology. Uh, because he per- pushing her in the way, like, yeah, okay, give up. And then she's like, wait, I wanted you <laughs> to fight me on it. I wanted you to tell me I should keep doing this. Because that's what she really wants. She establishes that's what she really wants. So inadvertently, 22 is making it so Joe is bringing that out of her. Mm. Because she does play the new piece that she wrote, that she wrote, and then it's like, yeah, you sure you want to do that? So okay, yeah, I, I, I could see it. I could see it. 
it's I'll tell you the surprise. Uh, like uh, the like the end of the movie happened, and like there was still like thirty minutes left, uh, like in the tr in the credits. And I'm like, wait a minute, this movie's credits isn't like twenty five minutes long, and it was twenty five minutes long. And I'm like, I thought there was like twenty more minutes worth of movie, and I was like, S I was sad that it ended. How about that? That was that was that was a, that was a, that was a sad. Wait, thing. the credits were thirty minutes long? It's like twenty five minutes long, yeah. Yeah, this movie. Yeah, it's like it's like two hours of like two hours of thing. The movie's like an hour and thirty five minutes or something. I'm like, oh. I just let it roll. I was like, this is amazing. Was there anything at the I end? Fell asleep, spoilers. I watched it with him, and I fell asleep because I was super, super sleepy. Uh, very cozy and very oh, so cozy, you guys. Uh, with the cat on me. Uh, you were wrapped in your grandma's blanket. My grandma's. I got my new. I got a blanket. Anyway, <laughs> I had to rewatch the end of Soul today, and like it ended, and I'm like, man, a lot of people worked on this movie. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh yeah, now that's a dumb story. Um, I, uh, yeah, I just, I really liked, uh, I really liked a lot of the takeaway about it. Just like this, this kind of like Joe's path to recognizing like being alive, like a, a over this idea of like my one purpose on this earth, what I'm meant to do. Um, like his conversation with uh, 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 the Williams with the the lady who uh when he's saying there he's like i've been waiting for this my whole life and yeah. i thought it would feel different mm -hmm. um and that's that's a that's a wild feeling and concept to grapple and i think the film handles it pretty well overall yeah um oh, yeah. and you're you're right like there's just a lot of good comedy throughout uh it's very pretty i really love the concept of getting in the zone and where that i do too. what that is i thought that was really because it relates to everything like to video games to like being good at your job just like yeah it's that was very striking. Just like they look like like Doctor Strange villains, like these like mole people. I just remembered one of my favorite cutaway jokes is probably like it's really dark, but it's the part where they end up back in the bodies, and it's like, what happened to the cat? And it cuts to the creepy on escalator, oh, and the cat's yeah. just like, meow. God, poor cat. <laughs> I also love some of the comedy with the Terrys, where it's like, all right, um, you five will go be well adjusted, and you twelve will go be self absorbed. Yeah. Maybe we need to stop sending so many through that one. <laughs> yeah, or so. Yeah. Like, it, it's there's a lot of I don't I don't want to say millennial humor, but that but it's like, hey, okay, you five go there, and then you go into the this one pavilion, and there's like we're seeing a lot of people through that pavilion. It's like that is a millennial joke if I've ever heard one. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Brandon, any more thoughts? Okay. No. All right. You know, I wasn't attacking your. Do you want to rate it? All right. Do I, I will give it a. Oh, God. The Pixar. Oh, I'd give it an eight. An eight. An eight. Yeah, yeah an eight. Yeah. I, I think it's a very simple but really well, uh, well done. That everything it executed on was great. Uh, just like it's really sweet. Give it an eight. Sweet eight. Hot eight. Point five. Ben. So Soul reaches reaches the Pixar standard. Now the Pixar standard is not a bad thing because the Pixar standard is freakishly high. So this movie is at a nine. That's what I feel a lot of Pixar films are at. Now of course some are lower, some are higher for obvious reasons. But this is a solid film. I was engrossed the whole time. I didn't want to look away. I was, I just, all the acting was great. The, it hit me where it hit. It got me around the fields and it got me laughing off my butt. So it's a solid nine. You, you brought up a good point. The, this was one of my favorite performances from Jamie Foxx. Oh, did a lot of we didn't talk about him. Mr. Jaime Foxx. Yeah. yeah. He's really good. Yeah. yeah. I, that, oh, yeah. Well, that's he's good. He's good, man. I thought oh, he was yeah. really solid throughout the whole film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really liked it. Yeah. It do miss about seeing a Pixar film outside of theaters is the Pixar short in front of it. Yeah, but you still you still can watch it. We opted no, out. I totally can. It's just it, I totally can. It's just it's, it, I miss the feeling of seeing a the movie theater. You see the Pixar logo, the short, and then the actual Disney that one, logo. Is that one Burrow? Yeah, Burrow. Yeah, I want to say um, I would give it an eight point five. Pretty pleased overall. Um, doesn't hit like the perfection level that Pixar can sometimes do, but uh, it's it's pretty good. I enjoyed it. I really don't know how how I would rate it. Uh, I think I'm feeling about a seven. Oh, um, okay. But I'll, honestly, the more thinking about it, it'll probably go up. So stay tuned for that going up. I guess I don't know seven for the post review. Yeah. Um, okay. I guess anything else you guys want to add? Uh, I don't mean to like cut you guys off. You guys are on a roll. No, I'm. 
I'm good. Just like I still just like the idea, like what the movie's about. Like I joked to him as soon as I found out, as soon as Joe died, and I'm like, is this a kids movie? Like for real? Like it's it's, it's like the the emotions and the stuff that it's tackling is like real heavy shit. I I think what um what I think is so powerful about the film what i think it does incredibly well especially with 22 being in joe's body with some of her experiences um is the concept of like unspeakable emotion yeah those things that we've all felt even if it's not that exact thing when she's when joe is uh joe's body is sitting under the tree with the wind going or yeah or joe imagining the ocean waves coming up when he's playing the music towards the end like we we all have like these universal like unspeakable moments of joy or peace and i think the movie does a really good job of giving enough images where all of us can kind of connect to at least one or two really well yeah uh and that's so abstract and i think they captured that abstractness better than i than i would anticipate i think like why the movie falls a little short for me and like i don't think it hit like that pitch perfect thing is because what it's trying to tackle is so is, big is a broad abstract emotional concept yeah um of just the joy of life, yeah. uh, like when when it's good, when you when you click, when you know you're in that groove and you've had a great day or a great moment, yeah. Uh, and that's really what the film at its heart is is communicating, and that's really really interesting. Um, seven point five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It it doesn't. My my reasoning is just it doesn't hit the emotional heights as like Inside Out or Coco for me. Sure. But, oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Cool. okay, I still okay. I was expecting to be bawling at the end of this movie, like a little baby, like I did at the end of Coco. I wasn't. Still gave me the feels, but Coco inside out. Oh no, those are tense right out the I, bat. They are. They no. exceed the Pixar standard for me. Holy crap! I will never forgive Coco for what it, for what it did to me the first time I saw that movie. Because I'm like, I look like this in front of this many people. Are you kidding me? Brandon, Brandon, and <laughs> and like five of our friends and my mom are all just in a row crying <laughs> during the credits. And if you remember, if you sit through the credits long enough of Coco, like it plays like through one song, and then they have the team put up their familia, oh, so it's like all their loved ones, oh. and everything. And like swells and i'm like oh, oh god i still no i own it on blu-ray and i haven't seen it since that fateful day when did coco come out 2018 no, 17. no 2017 17. i haven't seen it in three years because i know that if i sit through that movie again i'm gonna be crying because that movie hit me so it came out before we moved in together so it had to be before 2018 mm -hmm. uh i remember that if oh, I recall, man. I said I looked at my friends all blubbering, and I said, "Are we all crying?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Fanny, Fanny was, that was when I saw that was the second time Fanny had seen it. So she was just sitting there watching me because she knew what was coming. I was bawling my eyes out at the end of Coco. Even uh, we were we were crying together for Inside Out though, because we saw that together when that first came out. And oh man, that hit that got us. We'll never forget Bing Bong. All right, so I guess that'll do it. Um, you can check out our Wonder Woman 1984 review up now um, on the YouTubes and audio if I remember yeah. to do it. Um, I, I will. I got a new computer. I'm better at this now. Um, hmm? uh, just real quick, because uh, we didn't talk on, t touch on it much, but um, the music in Soul is really good. It's oh. uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross from Nine Inch Nails mm -hmm. working on it. Uh, that blew my mind, because this is without a doubt the least Trent Reznor thing ever made. Yeah, that dude did like um the the drag the the dragon the girl with the dragon tattoo remake. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Like he is hardcore. He did the Watchmen soundtrack. These guys did the Watchmen soundtrack, and then they did Soul. Uh, did and I think that the hills. Yeah, uh, the music overall is beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah, what's jazz? Okay, and maybe not a whole lot of movies, but Whiplash, La La Land, Soul. Jazz is 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 it fair to say that jazz is maybe making a little bit of a comeback? La La Land came out four years ago. Well, Whiplash came out long before that, but those are two big time movies that involve jazz and now soul. And, and just as a counterpoint to what we were talking about earlier, La La Land got hard criticism for because being all white, white people. people. Oh yeah, there's a whole lot of white people. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll take what, so what, what are we doing here? Um, 
it, real quick, because we're kind of rushing our way out of this one. I love uh, being Russian. The the moment with David Diggs' character where Terry accidentally drops him into the afterlife, and then he's like, oh, wrong guy, and he puts it back, <laughs> and he's just like... <laughs> and he's like, seriously, don't eat processed foods. Um, that was great. Yeah. He shows up for like three lines, and you immediately can tell it's his voice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Another, another joke is like, can't crush your soul here. That's what life on Earth is for. Yeah. Also, oh, uh, also, uh, Questlove. I thought he was great in the movie too. Who's Questlove? He was CJ. Was he the barber guy? No, no, no. He was the student. He was the oh. guy who got the, who got the audition. He was the drummer in the quartet already. Oh. Good job, Questlove. Right on. All right, Brandon, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, I like the cat. Also, <laughs> maybe laugh. Um. Okay. Where was I? What do we do? What's our podcast? FakeNerdPodcast.com If you want to check out all of our stuff, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. It's really hard to do this without the thing in front of me. I don't know why. I do this every week. Um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, uh, all at Fakener Podcast. If you'd like to get in touch with us personally, FakenerGuys at gmail.com. I'm at BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. Ben? You can find me trying not to ball my eyes out at the end of Coco at BenMagan27 on Instagram and Twitter. Ryan? You can remember me at DJ Tony Snark everywhere. Oh, you. Sparks. You can find me contemplating the joys of just being alive at Sparks Witty on Instagram and Twitter, S P A R K Z Witty. We also have a T Public and a Patreon. Links are in the description below. Um, masks. We can do a masks. Yeah, that's everything. All right. Um, uh, yeah. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to us on all the podcast channels. We'll be back from our hiatus coming soon with a best of 2019 top 10 list. Uh, or top, no. top Try 10. again. 10 what year? 2020. It's okay, bud. Hindsight's 2020. It's all right. I've been, living, I've been living in 2017 for the past three days. <laughs> uh, that's a sizzle for this week's podcast. Check that out. That'll make sense. Not really. Until next time, guys, stay fake nerds. Bye.